the Lakers uh, lost. I don't know if you heard, um, but I don't even know what to say. About I didn't LeBron. actually. Kinda, I only heard about LeBron. I only heard about LeBron. Yeah. I, know. I, 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 actually ca- I actually kind of don't want to talk about it because I, I don't you, know. Do you take means. it seriously? Like, do you really think Le- I mean, LeBron's going to retire? I take it at face value, which is that he was worn out. And, sure. but, but the thing about it is that, is that here's all we got to do. Let's do, let's just do a well, quick, you're not letting is me LeBron finish James there. going to be you, playing you, next you, season. You, you didn't let me finish Bon Well, we'll try. They said, on. they said last question. So LeBron knew that he had an opportunity to make a statement. He likes, mm-hmm. he like he always likes to have a nice walk off. He doesn't get asked about retiring. He gets asked about something else. And then he gives the, the answer and then he walks off and then he, you know, so he sort of drops that bomb in the room and says, okay, talk to you at media day in October. Or and not. Oh, right. Well, you know, um, so I'll take it at face value. I'll, I'll respect his words, but I would be extraordinarily surprised if it happens, especially since he spent the last couple of years planning right. for a two year run here. One more with his current contract. And then he can choose either be a free mm-hmm. agent or, um, pick up his option depending on what happens with Bronny. So right, and the guy had forty points, ten rebounds, nine assists. Like clearly, he, you know, he told Mac Ten uh, after Denver, Denver, Denver finished the sweep. He told <laughs> Mac Ten that um, he's still better than ninety percent, ninety five percent of uh, the NBA. Honestly, that's like low it's more like 97 98 right i mean that's like that's definitely that's an undisputable statement that is absolutely true yeah i mean i thought it was you know it was being humble humbly um (laughs) so i mean the guy's still he's still an all nba player he's not walking away from the game right now give me also like listen do we really think that the drama king is not going to have a highly publicized uh, retirement tour that provides all kinds of content to his media company. Give me a break. Of course, but, of course. But he, what? The, like, listen. It was all about LeBron today, not about hey, this number one seed that's been a juggernaut the entire playoffs just finished off a sweep to punch their ticket to the first finals in franchise history. Joker won the Magic Johnson. Uh, award for Western Conference MVP, averaging a triple double for another series, breaking Wilt's record for uh, triple doubles in a playoff run. And Jamal Murray, like I don't have the numbers in front of me, but oh my God, the guy averaged like a crazy efficient thirty-two points per game. I mean, the Nuggets look like a, a juggernaut. I would like to give them just a little bit of acknowledgement before we get back to oh my gosh, the Braun might retire. Give me a break. Well, we're well that's the funny about thing the about that. Now. Well, that's the funny thing about that series because the Lakers acquitted themselves really well. I thought they played really well in these four games. They played hard. They were competitive. Yeah. They pushed the pushed Denver in all four games. There were no no routes in the series, but hmm. the Denver Nuggets were just flat out better, and they yeah. just flat out outplayed the Lakers when it counted. Like that was that was one of the more competitive sweeps you'll see. But you also didn't walk out of it thinking anything other than that. Like you said, McMahon, the Nuggets just are the dominant team in the West. And we came in these playoffs. Mm-hmm. Denver sort of took their foot off the gas last month of the season. Yep. And we're like, all right, like this team was the best team in the West all season. Are they going to back that up in the playoffs? Are they going to have issues? And not only did they back it up, they tripled down on it mm-hmm. and rolled through everybody in as impressive a fashion as you possibly could. It's it's really fun when you get into the playoffs and you see a team really come into its own like this and take on challenges and step up in the moment like this. And to see Jokic and see Murray and these guys, after all the stuff they've been through, Jamal's knee, you know, losing in the conference finals in the bubble. They've had, you know, obviously lost quarters Portland back. in the second round. They've had some mm-hmm. quarters back issues. I mean, they've had a ton of stuff they've had to go through um over the years and for them to 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 overcome that to run through the playoffs like this it's just been awesome and Jokic is just absolutely unbelievable um I mean you just sit and watch him do this stuff in these games and it's just it's like a video game I mean he just is making insane plays putting up insane numbers every single game 
Well, and, and Michael Malone last night referred to Joker as an ultra conditioned athlete. And he actually stopped <laughs> and says, listen, I'm not kidding. Like he's being, he's being serious. And obviously he was beating you know, Anthony Davis up and down the court. Exactly. Quite, a, you, look, quite a lot. He, like he's not going to win a, uh, you know, if those guys pose shirtless, like you're not going to pick jokers. The, By the way, the, the guy you want to put on the calendar, but. That was like, uh, did you see the the, the shirt that Jokic wore last night? It was kind of like. A little tight a, t-shirt. It tight was like a medium. He was yeah. like, listen, I'm going to show he's off my physique, buddy. He's feeling good. Uh, but no, Joker, like, dude, when he's grabbing the rebound and pushing it, it's a fast break. Like he's beating the team down the floor a lot of time. He's he's getting the the pace or the uh, nuggets out and uh, and running. He is and he's playing. You know, it's like and when they, there was all the attention on oh the fatigue and that was of the clearly ball. a huge part of the game plan. I mean, yeah. it's it, you know him as a creator obviously is part of their game plan every night, but that was a huge part of their game plan in this series was to run. And the, the average average the average forty two minutes a game. He played forty five mm-hmm. minutes in game four, and he. He was the best player on the court down the stretch in these games. Game three, he gets in foul trouble. He comes in, takes over the game down the stretch. Game four, making plays left and right down the stretch. I mean, he, that three pointer. he just answered the, call, answered the bell. I was going to say, way. you know what's not part of the game plan? The three-pointer you're about to talk about. Well, except that, he makes one of these ridiculous, like, crazy shots every game. It's unbelievable. Even, even by his standards, though, that was crazy. Because oh, that was, was unbelievable. that was half Dirk, half Larry Bird. Because yeah. he, he 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 flung it from behind his head, doing the Dirk, and like I guess I'll throw in a dash of Steph Curry because he was kind of he kind of stepped back while moving left. Yes. So well, that <laughs> it, this like the step back that he hit with the shot clock buzzer going down in the first quarter made me gasp because I'm sitting like <laughs> that baseline right there and like just the arc on that shot. I thought it was going to like scrape the. The rafters. It was unbelievable. Right. When he hit that shot, it was the other end of the floor from me. The one we're talking about, 250 left, huge shot in the game. I covered my head's like my head like this was just like Whoa. it was because he was going, like you said, he's going left, is able to get his left foot outside of the three-point line, lift his right foot up in the air, turn his body. Just fling the thing with AD all over him. Perfect arc. Nothing while, but while net. While moving, like like moving to the left. All like, 284 was, pounds of his momentum was, was going left, and he turned his body and shot it, shot it back the other direction, off balance, with one of the best shot blockers of this generation in his face, and <laughs> hit nothing but net. And by the way, it was a three-point game, as you said, said, with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Yeah, I asked him, like, how are you comfortable taking and making those kind of shots? And he gave kind of a a funny answer. And at the end, he was like, off balance? Uh, I forget the exact words, but he's basically like, I'm off balance all the time. (laughs) Like, that's nothing unusual. Well, I liked it when his brother, I don't know which one it was, picked up Michael Malone and threw him around like a rag doll after the game (laughs) celebrating yeah um that was that was cool it was it was and i'm and I'm glad the nuggets uh get to have their celebration their fans um get to have like a little honeymoon here they mm-hmm. can they can uh just enjoy it for a few days and they can chide everybody who didn't believe in them et cetera et cetera just have your fun by the way Aaron Gordon played awesome in game four and yeah. he um and he had the you know i don't know i don't understand why big I, was I don't gonna understand say why after Go on. I don't understand why Darvin Ham didn't drop a three pointer for the last play because that team had no chance in overtime. Yeah. They were totally gassed. Um, but LeBron drew into the basket. It, it was not a a drive. I mean, don't we I think, think LeBron drew? Don't we think? Don't we think? Don't we think LeBron I, I drew that up? I don't yeah. know, but it was a bad decision. And then Aaron Gordon basically ended the game there by blocking. Yeah, Murray. Murray got a hand on the ball, and Gordon swatted Gordon. You know, like you, LeBron's still great enough to where you can play good defense on him, and he might have forty anyways. That was, I thought, the case. But you know, we talked about they said they were going to dare Gordon it to hit some threes. He did that. Uh, we've talked a lot about just what a great fit he is 
with Joker and Murray and kind of adapting his game to complement those guys so well. KCP, keep championship players, was really good for a lot of this series. Um, again, just they've got two superstars. And I know Jamal Murray's never been an all-star, but I'm sorry. When you do what he does in the playoffs, you're a superstar. They've got he's a playoff superstar, that's for sure. Right. They've got two superstars, and then they've just got really nice pieces that fit those guys well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Jackson uh, gave us gave us the the stats: thirty two and a half uh, points a game, six point three rebounds, five point three assists, and shot 50, 40, 90. 50 percent from the field. 40% the second, from I believe it's the second 50, 40, 90 series of his career, which I don't <laughs> think anyone else has ever done. That is amazing. Steph has never done it twice. Well, I don't believe so. I I saw it. I saw this stat. I I, no, I don't remember it exactly. So I probably listen. I nerded it out today. Got on Stathead, the basketball reference, you know, tool, and uh, plugged in. I'm going to say six guards, Jamal Murray, and then five of the guards who've created pretty good reputations is for playoff performances. Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Kyrie Irving, Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard. Steph's the only one who, who has been uh, statistically better than Jamal Murray in the playoffs. And, you know, honestly, the Kyrie, it's, not, it's pretty convincing in Murray's favor. There are two players that have ever averaged 30 points in a series and gone 50, 40, 90. Jamal Murray and Kevin Durant. Wow. Huh. Pretty good. And Jamal's done it twice? They're the, they're the only two guys that have ever done oh, it. It's sure. only happened twice. Yes, I'm sorry. Two guys have done it awesome. multiple times, averaging 30 points. Jamal and KD. So to your awesome. point, big man, you get in the playoffs with Jamal Murray. Well, and he just did that. And he 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 didn't get the Western Conference Finals MVP because that's how good Joker was in that series. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and you, you know, know they could have shared it, whatever. But well, and look, you know, I the people in Denver got wound up, and Jamal's gotten wound up about the bubble thing. But you know what? It was a fair thing to wonder if he could do that in an environment that wasn't the bubble. Now he didn't get a chance to do it, obviously, because of his knee injury the last couple of years. But it was a fair thing to wonder, like, hey, is this guy going to be able to step up in that manner? In the playoffs. And as we've seen, he has proven he loves the bright lights and loves the big stage in a way very few other guys do. And they, we talked about the other day, they're just, I just love watching their team. They're so much fun to watch. Their two man game is great. The guys all know where to play. They're cutting and moving all over the place. It, it, it's just super fun. Uh, it, this is cool the second time that, that Murray's been 50, 40, 90, 30 plus per game. I'm looking at uh, the bubble. Yes, the stat. Yeah, the stat. The stat was Kevin Durant has done it multiple times. Jamal Murray's oh, done it multiple, multiple times. times. I, I got yeah. you. I got uh, you. Nobody my else bad. has ever my done bad. it multiple times. Oh, good. I didn't explain right. it very well, so it's my fault. All right. Thank goodness Still that impressive. wasn't the trivia question because we, <laughs> our sponsor might be running away. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of trivia, trivia was brought to you by YouTube TV. Try it free today at youtube.com slash NBA 23. New users only. Terms apply. Cancel anytime. Forgot to put that in there. Now we got it. <laughs> we'll get now the deadly that. running. <laughs> we're out of practice with a sponsor. I, I, I gave him. The, I gave him the Sunday ticket plug. We're we're good. All right, <laughs> that's true. All right. Um, one more thing I want to say before we go. Uh, today, Rob Palinka had an exit interview with the media, and he said, "I don't remember what the verb was." Want to he keep the young core together, right? Yeah, yeah we the young core back. Well, we don't exactly I mean, know who's in the who's in the young core, um, but it was the most relevant thing that he said, especially in the wake of LeBron, you know, hinting whatever he was hinting at. You get Whoa, you our Kuzma's intentions, work? quote, our intentions are to keep our young core together. Kyle Kuzma's quote tweet: "Heard that before for crying emojis." Yeah, so who's I in the young I, core? Well, obviously Austin Reeves, and okay. as you pointed okay. out uh, on the pod last night, like yes, he's coming back. Um, you know, it's a matter of how much they're going to have to match, probably. Uh, but his cap holds small; that doesn't affect anything. Uh, and then Rui, and I think Rui is the one who 
that's the question mark. Like, they, he's the one who ha would have to be sacrificed if they decide that they want to make a, a big splash this summer. What about, are we counting Jared Vanderbilt in that too? Is I mean, how old is Jared core? Vanderbilt? I, yeah, he's, yeah. he's young. No, I don't care who's DMP CD last night. Don't tell me he's a core player okay. with DMP CD him with his with the okay. season on the line. That's fine. I'm just asking. D'Angelo Russell is not part of their young core. He's not. I'd I'd argue that young. Jared Vanderbilt's 24. I'd argue the core should if we any of these people we're talking about to Brian's point should be awesome reason we should be, we should be smacking a a huge line there between him well, and everybody well, else. And I yeah, think and that's kind of what LeBron might be thinking. <laughs> well, I'll say this. Rui made him some money during this playoff run. No doubt about it. Um, you know, his cap hold, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have my full Bobby Marks on. It is more it's significant. It, 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 he would have to be sacrificed for them to make a, a free yeah, agency for, splash or to for them to, to get sign. to 30, for them to get to 30 million. They would have to either sign and trade Rui or they would have to let him go yeah. to get to that yeah. 30 million. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.